Onitsuka Tiger is one of the most storied sneaker labels on the planet with a history that spans over 70 years coupled with the dedication to community and innovation. The Japanese company has endeared itself to millions of fans around the globe. However, it did fall only to rise again with a vengeance like a phoenix as a sub-label under the A6 Corporations, or ASICS, if you're being ultra Japanese about it. What's up, everybody? I'm Reggie Casual, and welcome to Rise and Fall, where we examine the highs, lows, pitfalls, and comebacks of the fashion industry. And most importantly, learn from those experiences, either history or business or whatever I can think of. Today, we take a hard look at Onitsuka Tiger, its head company, A6, for some of you out there, and how a small company can achieve massive success by banking on its history and dedication to innovation. That's the take. This is the intro. Let's get it. Short history. Onitsuka Tiger was started by Kihachiro Onitsuka in 1949, post where Japan as a wholesaler of shoes in Japan's Hyogo Prefecture. His goal to galvanize the Japanese youth into leading healthy lifestyles with exercise. For he believed this would raise the morale of the Japanese who were still dealing with the aftermath of World War II. Short history within history. As many of you know, after the end of World War II, Japan was occupied by the United States. And in short, the United States not only forbade Japan to have a military, but the US also imposed new censorship laws that literally brought all of American culture to Japan. Like they did censorship in reverse. For example, kissing in movies in Japan, now it was like a check. Yeah, you could do that. I like that. I'd like more. Jazz music, check again. The ousting of Zaibatsu business leaders, you know, the multi-conglomerate businesses that at the time almost owned all the wealth in Japan. Companies like Mitsubishi, Kawasaki, and Nissan. Yeah, America blasted all those business owners and championed small businesses in Japan. but also the US encouraged American sports. And while baseball was already quite popular in Japan, another sport was catching a little bit of headway. And that was And this is where Kihachiro would find his greatest inspiration. After developing sneakers for high schools, Onitsuka took in players' opinions on sneakers. And one issue that always came up was that grip. So Kihachiro, aimed to solve this problem and eventually had his eureka moment while eating an octopus salad. That's right, and it's actually quite tasty. You should try it. For Kihachiro figured if he could just put those suction cups that are on an octopus on a shoe, he could solve the grip issue. And would you know it? He did it and it, and it actually worked, at least for a time. At, at, come on. So it was in 1951 when the octopus shoe was first released and is credited for being the first domestic basketball shoe in Japan, making Onitsuka the indisputable first sneaker head in Japan. Or at least I like to think so. I like to think that that's kind of glorifying his name. From this, Kihachiro Onitsuka went all the way in, showcasing his sneakers to competitions across the country. In 1953, he created the Marathon Tabby, and in 1956, Onitsuka Tiger became the official shoe of the Japanese Olympic basketball team, and achieved huge acclaim in 1957 when barefoot marathon runner Abebe Bikila laced up for the first time in Onitsuka Tiger sneakers. That was definitely a Jesus moment. And I'm just gonna let that sit there. However, it was 1964 that Onitsuka Tiger made a bigger name in the big boy, the United States. This was when Blue Ribbon Sports became the US distributor of Tiger sneakers. Blue Ribbon Sports would go on to become Nike for those of you that don't know, which would be crazy if you did not know that at this point, it's like common knowledge. But if you don't, uh, that, that's okay. The partnership between the companies lasted only four years, but birthed one of the most iconic shoes of all time in the Cortez. However, the marriage was short-lived as an ugly legal battle led to now Nike taking full ownership of the Cortez name, leaving Onitsuka Tiger to rename their version the Corsair. Despite this, Onitsuka was still a very respected label, even in the US, and was held in high regard, even by Hollywood and celebrities. Many today often associate the Mexico 66 yellow model with the sneakers that Bruce Lee kicked faces in in the film Game of Death. Clarification. The actual shoes that Bruce Lee wore in Game of Death were not technically the Mexico 66. They're actually the Onitsuka Tiger Tai Chi. 
And if we're getting really technical, Bruce Lee actually wore three different shoes while filming the iconic Game of Death banana suit scenes. In fact, one sneaker looks mysteriously like some Moonstar Jaguars, but nothing has ever been confirmed, and I don't know either. By 1977, Onitsuka merged with GTO and Jelnik to become the ASICS or ASICS Corporation that birthed the world famous gel technology. This not only gave way to more technical runners like the Kayano and Nimbus, both of which are iconic running shoes in their own right, but it also birthed the runner turned lifestyle sneaker, the Gel Light series. A series, mind you, that has had collabs with everyone from Kith to Meet the Sneakers to Vivian Westwood to even retailers in Germany like a few, all while infusing tradition with innovation. The merger that became ASICS had one caveat, and that was that the Onitsuka Tiger brand fell by the wayside, and it wouldn't be until 2002 that we would see a relaunch of the classic silhouettes that made Onitsuka Tiger iconic. The soft launch, however, went marvelously. While quietly positioning itself in Japan for years, the now sub-label Onitsuka Tiger was banking on its Japanese roots and the slow but obvious crawl back to retro sneakers and silhouettes and lifestyle fashion industry worldwide. And while all this was happening, Hollywood certainly couldn't help itself yet again and took the lead in the West with the movie Kill Bill, directed by Quentin Tarantino, starring Uma Thurman. This all culminated with the opening of Nippon Made Onitsuka Tiger, a traditional craft-driven approach that put the meticulousness of Japanese design on full display. And in 2017, that sub-label, the old Onitsuka Tiger, grew by an enormous 20% and continues to kill it with collabs from Bait, Bruce Lee, to Street Fighter Chun Lee, showcasing a commitment to not only craft, but community. And lest we forget, we have to mention that Onitsuka has also turned into a bit of a runway label as well, showcasing collections based in sport that are not bad at all. They actually look really well done. So what can we learn from Onitsuka Tiger? Well, for one, Ideas and commitment are at the center of what makes any one business unique. And following through, of course. When Kihachiro developed his octopus basketball shoe, his first inclination was to put it on the foot of every damn basketball player in Japan. But only because he was confident in what he developed. He had something to market, so to speak. When you are confident in your ideas because you listen to feedback, which is important, it makes for a better product. And an even better position in the market. Also, he started small, high schools in his locale, then expanded from there. In fact, that is still at the center of Onitsuka Tiger management philosophy today. In Japanese, it's called the Onitsuka Shikikiri Mori Shouho, or in English, the Onitsuka Tiger Commercial Code, in which instead of expanding widely, the company actively seeks gaps in the market that have not been touched and concentrate on that point, which points to its roughly large awareness, but relatively small size when compared to the giants out there like Nike and Adidas. But because of its size, it's able to operate a bit more personally and provide consistent high quality products more oft than its mass market contemporaries. If anything, Onitsuka Tiger and by proxy ASICS proves you don't have to be huge to be well respected. There's a lot of innuendo there, but follow me. You just have to have a dedication to your ideals and understand where you fit in. Still, it's still going. To that end, Onitsuka Tiger, the original, didn't really have a massive fall. It was just waiting for the opportunity for the market to provide a gap where it could fit in nicely, just like what Kihachiro did nearly 70 years ago. And that's another one in the books. But what is your take on ASICS, ASICS, however you say it, or better yet, Onitsuka Tiger? Are you a fan, admirer, on the fence? Let it be known in the comments or give us another suggestion on what to do with Rise and Fall. And don't forget, if you want to know more on the insides of the fashion industry, building a label, or just extra content with access to our private Discord and monthly industry webinar, join us on Patreon where you can get all of those extras. But subscribing is always welcome. It's always welcome. So most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info on international fashion culture and business from Tokyo. It's your boy and keep it casual. Yoroshiku And I'll see you guys in a minute.